Hey y'all, it's Ashley at Bookish Rome and this is probably different for you because I am filming on a different side of the room. I typically film on the other side of the room in front of my other bookshelves, but now I am filming in front of my bookshelf where I keep my comics and my manga and my graphic novels. And this is probably a little different. I probably will start filming on this side of the room whenever I do my comics, my graphic novel, and my manga type of stuff. So just a little bit of a switch up. I hope it's not too awkward. I also don't have like my light on so the lighting may be a little bit you know a little bit different. I just didn't feel like doing the setup and this is a reading vlog. It's not a formal sit down video whatever. This is just an introduction to reading vlogs. So I have not decided on the title of this reading vlog so I don't know what it is. It probably is going to take me a little while to figure out what I want it to be but I just wanted to do a reading vlog where I'm essentially just reading comics and graphic novels. There is no theme related to these comics and graphic novels. I'm just reading them because I want to continue to highlight and show you know love to comics and graphic novels outside of like what I do in my monthly wrap-ups. I feel like I can't talk about them as much in my monthly wrap-ups because my monthly wrap-ups are so freaking long y'all. I feel like I get a little bit more of, of uh, I guess kind of like an edge to be a little bit more long-winded in a reading vlog than I would in a reading wrap-up although I'm long-winded in those two but literally it's literally just me reading comics and graphic novels like I said no theme no rhyme no reason just kind of showing you some things that I'm checking out I've already read one thing at the start of this so this is starting on a Sunday this video will go up on a Saturday so I'm essentially giving myself six days to read as much as I can read within six days which should be interesting finding that balance between you know parenting work and reading comics and graphic novels I will say already that it does not take me long to read comics and graphic graphic novels I really can depending upon whether it's text heavy or not I can usually average between 30 to 45 minutes for a volume and then an even shorter amount of time if I'm reading issues I don't know if I'm gonna read any single issue stuff I haven't made that decision just yet I don't know it could possibly happen for single issues happen like that they're you know 30 pages <laughs> and it's mainly artwork you know comics and graphic novels it's for the art we're not going in looking for super super text heavy stuff usually that's the issue when you have authors who are typically used to writing prose try to write comics and graphic novels they come in too text heavy and they overwrite and a lot of authors will tell you that their first experience in writing a comic or a graphic novel they usually get told to pull back because the whole purpose of a comic and graphic novel really is the storytelling too that happens within the art it's not just about the text and when you're used to leading with text you have a tendency to overwrite so I've already read one it was a reread for me and I read Archie volume number one this is the Mark Wade run Fiona Staples did illustrate I believe the first three issues in this bind up and then there was another illustrator that I can't remember and then Veronica Fish illustrates I think the last two issues maybe issues five and six I think that's how it's broken up as far as illustrations but it was a reread for me I decided that I wanted to reread the Mark Wade run of Archie I do like Archie comics I've read quite a few Archie comics in my lifetime there's a lot of spin-offs in Archie this is not my first time clearly reading Mark Wade's run I think that Nick Spencer actually did a run as well so I may check that out I don't know if I'm gonna be checking that out within this reading vlog but I think I want to check that out this year and so this first volume basically is a setup when we are introduced to Archie as a character in this specific run he is like literally going through a breakup with Betty we don't know what that breakup is and slowly but surely we find out what happens between the two of them and literally like the entire school Riverdale High is kind of falling apart because they're like if Archie and Betty can't make it then none of us can make it and of course we get an introduction to Veronica Jughead is in this it's really more so about the relationship between Archie and Betty trying to navigate them being separate because they've been together since they were in kindergarten and not like serious serious relationship but 
they of course got more serious as they got older but they didn't know anybody else in terms of like romantic partnerships outside of each other so it's them kind of navigating their breakup and then when Veronica comes in I think it is Betty kind of realizing that although Veronica is not the nicest person in the world she does love and care about Archie in her own way so that's basically the first volume there's not a lot to it as a matter of fact I think this first volume was only like 176 pages the artwork of course changes because you're looking at three different illustrators on it which is not a bad thing but sometimes I get kind of finicky about that when the artwork is not consistent but I do think that Veronica Fish does do the illustrations for the rest of the volumes I don't know if I'm gonna pick up any more of the volumes like before I end this reading vlog it may or may not happen I'm not making any promises there is no TBR with this reading vlog because why would I make a TBR? I'm a mood reader. I'm even more of a mood reader when it comes to comics and graphic novels, so don't expect a TBR. It is, I think, close to 11 o'clock at night, so I am probably going to be headed to bed rather soon after I finish editing a video that's going to go up on Tuesday, which would be my December wrap up on Thursday. I have my favorite my favorite books of 2021 going up and then this vlog will go up on Saturday but I do want to make it through at least two more bind ups I am 70 pages into this one and it's just a little over 100 pages and that is Ianu Child of Wonder volume one and this I'm not gonna even try to butcher the the writer and the artist's name on this but this is interesting because I feel like this is a Nigerian based studio that partnered with dark horse to put out these stories that are inspired by African history and culture and mythology and um, this one is specifically based on Yoruba traditions and it's pretty interesting so we have a main character Ianu who has these powers and she lives in this society where she is left out in the forest and it's this whole community where there's an inner wall and an outer wall. The inner wall people have more money than the people who live in the outer wall but she's even more outcast than the people who live in the outer wall and basically a new king has been crowned and they are trying to get rid of In Inanu and her um, her teacher so she's an apprentice and she's learning what task and what tradition she's supposed to to follow to get rid of these creatures called the corrupt we don't know what they are yet at least where I'm at in this volume we don't know what they are just yet so she is supposed to be training to help get rid of them and then she goes and she saves the prince's life and then she displays that she has magical abilities and thereby is like, we need to kidnap her and her teacher and basically get rid of them. So her teacher tells her to run. She's basically on the run right now. And we don't really know much about the history of the powers or anything. This is more so like a setup type of volume where we're learning more about the characters and the world that they live in. And I do like that the creators have created these sections at the end of certain sections what they do is they highlight exactly what they're focusing on in the book and they talk about like the inspiration for where they got it from and how they're trying to respect Yoruba um, traditions and how it's based on real Yoruba traditions and it's it's a pretty decent read so far I think the one thing that I'm not liking <laughs> is the the artwork it is not all of the artwork it is the faces that I don't like it is digital I mean most of what we see now in comics is digital but you can really really tell so these two faces right here if you can see them they don't look proportionate at all and I just don't like the way that the faces are drawn and they're expressionless or the same face is used constantly within several panels and I don't like that it definitely it, it definitely could be better the story itself is good but I think the facial artwork is not my cup of tea so 
yeah but either way i am enjoying it story-wise the next one that i'm thinking about reading possibly before the night is over with or at least starting the vein and this is a vampire comic book series that takes place in chicago in 1941 i don't know much else about it i think it is horror I have not seen many people that I know that read comics. I haven't seen many people read this one just yet. So I'm kind of going to walk into it a little bit on the blind side. So hopefully I do enjoy it. I think some other things that I did have in mind was possibly catching up on some DC stuff. I really should read Persepolis because we're going to have our live show for the comic book club at the end of the month for that one. But we'll see how I feel. So this is going to be kind of like a mood reading comic graphic novel type of vibe, which I hope you all enjoy. Anyway, what could be fun is if you've made it this far in. I mean, I'm hoping you made it this far in. My goodness gracious. Put before you see, because I'm probably going to end up listing, list, listing in, the, uh, in the info box all of the comics that I have read the titles, because I know somebody's going to ask for a list of them. But before you go and you look at that, Guess in the comments how many comics and graphic novels you think I've read in this vlog. And then go back and see if you got your number right. I think that could be fun. I think for me, I think by the time that the week finishes, if I'm being realistic in six days, I think I'll probably read anywhere in between eight to ten. It's my estimation. Things could go south this week. I don't know what could happen this week, but I'm going to give myself like eight to ten this week. And that's also trying to make room for other stuff that I'm reading whether that's ebook audio or physical book or whatever so but that's it I will check in probably tomorrow because it is late and I don't plan on checking in for the rest of the night so see y'all tomorrow hey y'all just wanted to do a quick check in I am on my lunch break and I decided to read hey y'all just doing a quick check in sitting in the car it's my lunch break um I decided to pick up Unearth a Jessica Cruz story by Lillian Rivera this is one that I've had my eyes on for a while but I should probably talk about what I so I didn't read anything else last night well that's not true I started reading Beauty that's the name of it and Beauty is one that I had read a while ago I think I got up to like volume three of it it is about a new sexually transmitted disease that makes people beautiful but like within the first few pages of the comic you realize that people are now like spontaneously combusting because of this STD so I was gonna finish that one but I forgot to download it to my Kindle because I was reading it through Hoopla and I forgot to download it before I left the building. So I did end up downloading Unearth Jessica Cruz Story by Lillian Rivera. And it is one that I had my eye on for a while. Um, and I just finished it and it was not my favorite. I'm so disappointed. I didn't really like it that much. I think some of the main issues that I had with it is that like it's kind of crafted to be a Green Lantern story and it's really not a Green Lantern story it's just a character that has Jessica Cruz's name and you don't really see how it's tied to the lanterns I mean other than that the fact that she has a green ring and then Jon Stewart does make an appearance I think that if it wasn't marketed as a Green Lantern story, that it would be great. I mean, it's great for like a middle grade YA audience. It talks a lot about immigration and DACA and ICE. And I think that it does give a great perspective of just what Jessica's going through in terms of like her anxiety and her anger. And I think that it was a great incorporation of Aztec gods and goddesses. I thought that was pretty cool. But because it's marketed as like a DC Green Lantern story, it doesn't really work. So that was a part of it that made it kind of disappointing. I also wasn't like a huge fan of the artwork. Artwork was just okay, but I just didn't like it. It was very blocky. It was still kind of like in sketch mode. <laughs> like it's, it felt like sketches, like Jessica Cruz's body looked very blocked. And then the eyes for a lot of the characters were never really defined. I did like the color palette because it stayed with kind of like that green, kind of giving that O to the Green Lantern. And I love the splashes of colors that we got when we dealt with like the gods and goddesses, the Aztec gods and goddesses but it was not what I was anticipating it being and so that's just yikes so it wasn't as good as I thought it was going to be but I'm about to go back in to work and so I don't know what I'm going to read 
Next, I still have about maybe like 30 or 40 pages of Inayanu. I think that's how you say it. I still have a little bit of that one left, but I have so far finished Archie and Unearth a Jessica Cruz story. So those are the two ones that I have finished. I probably am going to aim to finish like two more tonight, which will put me at four for the first two days. So we'll see and I will check in later. <laughs> Alright, so I am here for an update, y'all. I have some serious updates because I didn't film it yesterday. I was just really, really tired yesterday. Yesterday was a really, really busy day for me and I just didn't feel like updating. So the last update that you would have received would have been from Monday, I believe. That was probably the final update that I kind of gave. And since then, I've actually read quite a bit. I think I'm up to five volumes read and I'm working on my sixth volume and it is Wednesday and I plan on knocking you know two or three volumes out today so my estimation at the beginning of this I said was like going to be in between eight to ten and I think I'm going to fall within that range so yes for accomplishing goals so I did end up finishing Ianu by um which is Child of Wonder volume one and I gave this one 3.5 out of five stars it had a extreme cliffhanger at the end that I really did end up enjoying. I found out that volume two is supposed to come out sometime later on this year and I am going to read volume two because this definitely is a build-up. This is like a prologue to the story and it's a lot of character building that happens in this but man oh man that cliffhanger at the end threw me off because I was not expecting that one at all. But what I didn't realize is I went because I was so intrigued by what this indie group had been doing and they had paired up with Dark Horse and they're called Unique Studios. So I went on their website to kind of see what else they had and I forgot that I had checked out another book. I didn't realize it was by the same company and I had checked out Malika Warrior Queen a while ago and I forgot that this was also done by the same studio. So I think that a lot of these books take place in the same world, but not necessarily in the same city. So like the first one, Iyanu, takes place in Ilu, and I'm not sure where this one takes place, but I think they're all connected in some way because from their website, what I saw was that they're having a volume that's gonna come out probably sometime this year that's gonna connect all the books that they have in their, you know, in the works or the titles that are under this company. I am going to try to read this one. This one is a little bit longer. I think this one is a little over 300 pages. And the artwork in this one already, just from a flip through, is going to be better. I, this is a different artist on this one. And the faces already <laughs> are a lot better than what I saw in Iyanu. So I am excited to pick this one up and see if there's any connections between um, Iyanu and Malika. I don't know if there are, but maybe there will be. So I also did end up finishing Thirsty Mermaids, which is another one that I checked out from the library a while ago. Thirsty Mermaids is about three, well, it's two mermaids and a sea witch who like to drink. So in the opening scenes, opening panels of this book, they literally are sitting around and drinking. They run out of alcohol and they're like, we need to get more. So the sea witch is like, maybe I can kind of transform us into humans. And they do end up transforming into humans. They get to land and they're horrible at being humans. And rightfully so, because they don't know anything about being humans. Excuse me, I don't know why my voice. Wow. Tell y'all something. COVID cough lasts for forever. The body aches and the cough are absolute garbage. And they last for what feels like a lifetime. Like, literally, I am two weeks out of getting COVID and I'm still coughing and my body still feels like trash. It's horrible. Anyway. They're horrible at being humans, and rightfully so. They've never been humans before. So they meet a human that ends up taking them under their wing and teaching them about different things. The concept of money, having a job, capitalism. It's it's very interesting. And what I think I liked about this so much, because I wasn't thinking I was going to like this as much as I did, it was a four-star read for me, and I loved it because it starts off as really like jokey, humorous, hee-hee-ha, not that serious. And then it gets pretty deep because you have two of the characters whose names um, are Pearl and Tooth. 
really do adjust well to being on earth they get jobs pretty easily they make friends but ease i think that's how you say her name yeah ease is not adjusting as well and they are struggling so much like so 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 much and this was kind of a gateway to talk about like you know depression and anxiety and how ease doesn't really feel comfortable in their skin and body dysmorphia it was just it got a lot deeper than what i expected and these characters end up being a lot more intricate than what i expected so basically what i thought was going to be like really really jokey jokey hee hee ha ha ended up being a pretty serious graphic novel focused on some really complex relationships and i really adore this and brie and i are going to be reading snapdragon by the same author sometime this year for a comic book club and i can't wait to see what they did with snapdragon because this was already so good so i also <laughs> ended up finishing so now i'm thinking about okay so what have i read so i read ianu i have read thirsty mermaids i read archie I read the Jessica Cruz story by Lillian Rivera and I also read this is a reread for me yes a reread and <laughs> it's called the beauty and it is about a sexually transmitted disease that makes people beautiful so this is an STD that people are actively attempting to get <laughs> I read volumes one through three a while ago, a long time ago, and really just ate the story up and was shocked about how much I liked the story. Going back and rereading it, it's definitely more complex than that. It's kind of how I feel about sex criminals. Like people are like, oh, sex criminals is two characters who have sex and then they orgasm and stops time. Like it's, it's more complex than that. This one is more complex than talking about an STD that makes people beautiful because the people who are getting the STD in this first volume start to spontaneously combust and they don't know why. And there's some commentary on big pharmaceutical companies and you know, there's some dirty politicians involved when there's a possibility that a cure might exist for this. And it's told from the perspective of two police agents that are both contaminated with the beauty and they have, you know, no idea how they're going to get rid of this thing and there is some discussion about how to get rid of it and it's interesting because it's kind of morally gray because when you figure out that there is a possibility of a cure the way that it would be administered is not to rely on pharmaceutical companies but to give it in a way that it spreads as fast as the flu if not faster so you contaminate yourself and then contaminate other people but it's for the good of saving these people from dying but at the same time you're taking away their choice to get a cure so i'm interested to see i, I haven't read these in years so i can't remember exactly what happens in volume two and three and there's six volumes out so i haven't decided yet whether i want to read uh, the rest of those volumes for this vlog or not I I've really just genuinely have not decided if that's what I want to do because I'm pulling up my Kindle app on my phone I had some stuff that I checked out on Libby and I completely forgot about it because mainly I use like Libby for my audio stuff and I use Hoopla for my comic book stuff but I forgot that I had started checking out some stuff via Libby as well so i started reading this middle grade graphic novel called city of dragons the awakening storm this is a new one that i think came out last year and i'm probably about maybe 50 percent into that one the artwork is really nice i'm not so much into the story right now it is about a chinese american girl who ends up going back to china she's going to this school because her mom remarries and her stepdad has a job in this company and this big tech company and she goes to this elite school this international school and she meets this woman 
on like the street when they're out one day when they're supposed to be at the museum and her and her friend end up cutting school when she meets this lady and she gives her what appears to be a dragon egg and it connects to a story that her dad told her when she was younger but that's as far as I am and I'm not a hundred percent into it but we'll see how it plays I also have Amulet, um, the first volume, The Stonekeeper, which is one I've been wanting to read. And then I also have Five Worlds, The Sand Warrior. So I have a couple of middle grade graphic novels that I wanted to check out. I still have stuff on Hoopla right now that I haven't read. One of them is Radiant Black, which I was reading the single issues of that, but I don't think I got the last two issues. I don't think I bought the last two single issues of that. So I want to finish that out. And then I also have Wonder Woman, the bind up of that one, where I think I've read like the first two issues of that, but it has issues 70, 770 through 779. And I think I maybe read up to 773. So it's about six issues of that that I have not read. So I'm, I have a lot to choose from. I don't know what I'm going to do, but we shall see how much I get done in the next three days because you know Friday is going to be kind of the last day that I'm going to be reading this stuff because yeah I just wanted to see like you know do a vlog where I'm reading comics for a week because I've never done anything like this that's something that you usually see on booktube and it's something that I really really love so yeah but I will do another check-in later for real for real. I will do a check-in later today promise toodles I'm telling y'all this COVID cough is something like serious Oh man, throat is killing me. I just took some some medicine, some something. I just took something to help with this cough. Anyway, quick update: I did end up finishing the Awakening Storm, which is City of Dragons number one, and I actually ended up liking it a lot more because of the fact that. I think what I got about 60% into it, that's when the pacing really started to pick up. So I don't feel like I really give a good explanation about what this graphic novel is. It's a middle grade graphic novel and it's about this young girl by the name of Grace who loses her father at a really, really young age. Well, not a really young age, but she loses her father and um, her mother ends up remarrying this guy who becomes their stepdad and he works this big tech company and then they end up moving to Hong Kong and while she's there she meets another kid at this you know international school and they go to the street market and this lady ends up giving her an egg of course the egg hatches and it's a dragon and she realizes at that point essentially that the legends that her father used to tell her about um about dragons and stuff like that are possibly true and there's this whole like kind of heist story to it but i really like the incorporation of like ancient chinese mythology to it and the friendships in it between grace and the other three kids that she meets at this international school is really cool like i wasn't expecting the friendships to be so cool but the friendships were really cool and I really like that. So I ended up giving that one four stars, even though it was like, I thought it was just going to be like a three star reader. I didn't think it was going to be that good. But I did end up enjoying it. So I started reading another one called Making Friends, which is a really weird one. It's about this girl whose aunt passes away and she leaves pretty much everything to the family. And her family is like super obsessed with money. And the only thing that she wanted was some journals that her aunt had or some sketchbooks and then her aunt and her uncle her aunt and her uncle took that from her so then she gets one of them and then one day she's at middle school it's about the fact that she goes to middle school her friends are at a different middle school i believe it because i think they're in a different zone and they all went to the same elementary school but they're in a different zone so she doesn't have any friends going into this new middle school and she finally um goes home after her first day which wasn't good and she draws this character from this tv show that she's been watching and it comes to life so clearly the notebook that she got or the sketchbook that she got from her aunt is magical in some ways and whatever she draws in the sketchbook like ends up coming to life 
So I got about maybe 90 pages into that one. I think it's a little over 250. But then my eyes started hurting while I was reading my Kindle. So then I decided I'm going to switch. So I started reading. <clears throat> see if I can see that. I started reading Piece by Piece, which is a story of um, Nishri's um, hijab. And this is one that I had randomly picked up. And it's about a young girl who experiences a hate crime. And she was actually at a school function and she was telling her classmates and teachers about Bangladesh. And her and her friend are on their way to her house after school. And she was putting a scarf on her head. It wasn't a hijab. She was just putting a scarf on her head. And some random person mistook it for a hijab and was Islamophobic and he rips it off of her head but in ripping it off her head he like takes her hair out of her scalp so it's a really really traumatic experience for her and she's going through recovery right now and her cousin she goes to her cousin's house and you find out that her cousin wears a hijab and she asks her cousin about it and then she decides that that's what she's gonna do so I'm not that far into it. The artwork is really pretty because the author really focuses on like watercolor. Let's see if I could find something for y'all to look at without it being like spoiled, too spoiled. So she does a lot of watercolor and it's really, really pretty. I think it's really, really pretty. And a lot of it is art concentrated. So you get a lot of emotions within the artwork and not necessarily through the text, which, of course, y'all know I, I always enjoy that. So it's late, and I have to get up and go to work in the morning. Um, but I think I'm going to finish this one, and I'm going to call it a night. And then we'll see where I'm at tomorrow. Hey, y'all. So I just wanted to do another quick check-in. I finished the middle grade graphic novel, Making Friends. It was really weird. Like, super weird. The art was good. And it's about this girl who is trying to make friends and she's having a hard time. Because, so she ends up having to go to a different middle school than the rest of her friends that she went to elementary school with. And she has this magical book. I think I talked about this in a previous clip. It's just weird. It was really weird. Like some of the jokes I think I kind of got as an adult, but I don't know if a middle grade audience would get them. And there was this like weird kind of evil guy that she drew but didn't have a body and he was from this manga series and he came back and he tried to destroy everybody it was just strange and not my favorite at all like Danny who's the main character has a very very low self-esteem and that's never really addressed at all like it's not really talked about it's it was just weird <laughs> that is the weirdest middle grade graphic novel that I've ever read and I really didn't like it so I'm giving it two stars because the art was good and I think that the whole concept of like making friends in middle school is something that a lot of middle school could, kids could relate to. But a lot of the jokes, I don't feel like they were adult jokes. And it was just strange. And there was a lot of bullying in it. And the bullying is addressed. But it almost felt like kind of like a satire. And I almost feel like was this written with middle school kids in mind or was this written with like adults in mind and I usually get that with like picture books where sometimes authors will write with like the caregiver in mind but this was strange this one was really wonky and weird and yeah not my favorite I won't be continuing with the series but that's okay so I'm gonna yeah then <laughs> I finished that one I still am trying to finish the uh piece by piece which is the story of Nishrin's hijab. I have just a little bit of that left. I'm probably gonna finish that and then I'll do another check in.
y'all so I'm here to do my final check-in so it was really really fun doing this reading vlog I'm so excited that I ended up in deciding or I ended up doing it and that I decided to do it so I ended up reading eight comics and graphic novels I did end up reading Archie I read the Jessica Cruz story which was Unearth. I ended up reading Thirsty Mermaids I read Inanu I also ended up reading The Beauty I read Making Friends I read The City of Dragons book actually I think I read nine y'all maybe somebody do a count and then I ended up reading the story of uh, Nishren's hijab piece by piece which is one that I haven't really gotten a chance to talk about because it's one that I just recently finished and this one was really really good I ended up giving this four stars like I said before I think I talked about how it dealt with the fact that she experienced a extremely traumatic event with someone who decided to rip her covering off of her head thinking that it was a hijab and it wasn't but it leads her down the path of wanting to wear a hijab and there is some historical context in this book that talks about the confrontation between Bangladesh and Pakistan and why her grandfather doesn't want her to wear a hijab and the relationship that her mother has with her father because of what happened in Bangladesh what I did really like about this one I talked about this before is the artwork is really really pretty because the author focuses in on it basically watercolor there was also something really cool in the back of this one where the author made it seem as though the main character Nisrin was giving a book report on Bangladesh so as a reader you learn a lot about Bangladesh and the government and the language and the food and the culture and a little bit about the conflict that happened between Pakistan and Bangladesh and it was just really really interesting I ended up really enjoying this one I gave it four out of five stars if you've never read this one I would highly highly recommend it I think also one of the elements that I really really enjoyed I know I just gave it the rating but I want to go back and say this is that we also get to see a secondary character who was there at the time that Nishran went through her traumatic experience and this person had to witness it and the two of them grow apart because they're both dealing with trauma in such an extensive way and being so young the two of them don't know how to process that trauma and remain friends because by being with each other they're constantly reminded of it so one thing that Nisran struggles with throughout this entire graphic novel is starting high school and not really having any friends and she decides to wear the hijab because it's something that makes her comfortable she's exploring her religion and then she realizes that there are people who are going to instantaneously judge her because of her wearing her hijab but what I love is that she doesn't back down from her decision because it's something that she's put her heart into and she's super committed to it and it was just heartbreaking to see the Islamophobia that happens when people instantaneously see like someone wearing a hijab like you know what's there but I think seeing this in kind of an art based format it was it was super heart-wrenching to see this young girl who you know made this decision wanted you know she had her reasons for doing it and seeing people instantaneously judge her for it so that was that was a difficult part to read but I think the book itself is definitely about healing and finding confidence in yourself and you know learning more about the history of your heritage but like I said, if you haven't heard of this one, I would recommend it. I also ended up reading, like I said, um, a last one, which ended up being uh, The Stonekeeper, which is the first book in the Amulet series. And I absolutely enjoy that one. This was a reread for me. I forgot that I actually had already read volume one of the Amulet series. And it is about this young girl and her family, the father. And this is not a spoiler because it's, it's super early. The father ends up dying in a car accident that the mother and and our main character and the father get into the father ends up dying in a car accident and the mother moves our main character and the main character's brother out to this reclusive mansion that used to belong to her grandfather and some weird things start happening and that's when the main character discovers the amulet and her mother ends up getting kidnapped and she's trying to save her mother and she does make her way into this world I'm, I'm tiptoeing about what this is about because I don't really want to spoil anything but I will say that volume one definitely is more of a setup because you don't know anything about the world you barely know anything about the characters you just know that there is this mysterious uh, really recluse great-grandfather who may have answers to why our main character ends up getting this amulet and the power behind this 
amulet and there's clearly a an opposing side that is going to cause maybe some issues I don't know because the way that it was set up was really really interesting but I'm not surprised that I enjoyed that one either like I gave that four stars as well so I think I finished off pretty good this week I read some really really great graphic novels and comics it was such a wide variety and so many different backgrounds that I really did end up enjoying that so I'm going to go back and I'm going to do my count again like I said I ended up reading Archie <laughs> I did read Unearth the Jessica Cruz story I ended up reading Beauty I read Iyanu I read Thirsty Mermaids I read the City of Dragons book Making Friends Amulet and Nishri's um the piece by piece the story of Nishrin sorry hijab I keep saying her name wrong but it's Nishrin's hijab so I ended up reading nine volumes which is more than I expected I know I quoted myself as in between eight to ten but this week it did end up getting kind of hectic so I'm surprised that I was able to get to two nine volumes of stuff but I'm glad that I did I hope you all got some great recommendations and that you really enjoy this reading vlog if you would like to see something like this again and maybe I do it like thematically like I don't know maybe I focus on middle grade or maybe I just do a reading vlog where I'm just reading DC comics or I'm reading just Marvel comics for a week let me know in the comment box below if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you want to see more content from me hit the subscribe button hit the bell for notifications and I will be back with a, another video soon thanks for watching y'all